Welcome to Backyard Planking. My name is Charles. I'll be your host as we go through and explore everything BB and pellet related from air pistols to air rifles, targets, and ammo. So uh, before we get started with what we're going to do today, we're going to do a little learning. There was somebody that had uh, posted something in the comments about the Beeman P-17. It was, um, oh God, I got to get better at this. If she figures out that I can't remember that name, be wearing one of them cotton picking shirts. She won't even ask no more. She just says, what color? Um, hiccup. No. I'm going to cheat. It was... Bad eyes. Nick Rupp. That was close. Anyway, because this thing is crazy to load. Well, he knew somebody had one and they had taken a little Dremel tool or something to the back of it and rounded it out. I said, well, there's actually an easier way. Well, gee, why didn't you show us this to begin with? show you all my tricks so what you do pull a hammer back because that releases the top lift it up and it's got the little locking bar that's in there that's what the hammer grips straw you go to the dollar store get however many you want get it only has to be the size of the 0.177 caliber pellet okay some of the bigger straws, you know, they won't, because it has to fit in between the bar that the hammer locks and the open. And just take it, stick it in there, you fit it right down over the top of the barrel. I know it's hard to see my big old clod hoppers in the way. Right over the top of the hole, take your pellet, make sure it's going the right way. And just drop it. And you can take your finger and push the pellet in. Pellet go down the hole. Then Straight shoot. Now you can also take a uh, like one of the wooden shish kebab sticks. Um, if you find one that's the right size, they have some that are really tiny and then some that are huge. But if you look around, you find one of those. Break the sharp point off of it. Use the other wooden part. And just like I showed with the well, when we were looking at the 25 caliber hats and when I cut the popsicle sticks and just stuck them on top same thing that way you can open it up and insert it two easy ways might not work for everybody but it's a place to start I'm trying to get you guys to think outside of the box see anyway back to our edge yes I put the hat on the Hatson and I figured I'd Take a few minutes today. I kind of halfway got it sighted in, but there's a couple of things that uh, I want to share with at least some people. I mean, some of you guys have been doing this for a long time. You, you're going to see and go, eh, we already knew that. And some people don't. Now that we have scratched the surface at least with different weight grains and, and kind of how they react, and it, you knowing that there's different stuff that's out there instead of just the standard flat nose, you know, like five grain stuff and that uh, weight can influence accuracy and sometimes make it hit hard. I figured we'd start with this and, and as I just put it on here, do a couple of little things. So got my other camera over here. So let me go get it turned on, come back. And uh, we're gonna look at some of the projectiles that we're gonna be using and uh, show you the difference. 
All right, so now that uh, you know, a lot of you guys knew about the different grains and different stuff that was out there. <clears throat> Some of you didn't, but one of the things a lot of times that even over my long lifetime, um, I have made the mistake of doing, but you know, some people do ask questions about, well, when you're saying it in, what am I going to do now? Here's a suggestion, whether it's 0.177 caliber, 22, 25, and on up, find something middle of the road. For example, the 7.4 grain destroyers from Crossman work really well in the 0.177 caliber. They're a little heavier than the plain ones, okay? They, uh, and just a little bit of weight can change the accuracy of it. Same thing with the 22s. 14.9, uh, somewhere around in there is about a standard, um, that, which Crossman has a destroyer series for that. So if you get something about 15.2 something, it, you're just a little over, it helps. Now, obviously if the weight grain goes down, it's going to shoot a little high. If the weight grain goes up, it's going to shoot a little low. As long as you practice with it enough, you shoot it enough, you will remember that. Now for the 25, I, I can't <clears throat> 24.38 grains. It's not exactly middle of the road, but it's a little over to 19.9. So that's what we're going to run with. <clears throat> now, if you order one of these, this is a Optima. This is the actual scope that come with it. Um, it is a 4x32, but it does have a magnification adjustment on here from, from 3 to 11, I think. It'll really kind of bring the picture in close. Yes, I'm using my stand because I'm trying to take some of me out of it. I mean, this is a pretty steady hand over here, but this is the one I squeeze the trigger with. I need all the help I can get. I got the other camera on, so we're on uh, target paper on the right hand side, I guess maybe at the top. Hair shade low, a little bit left. So just to make sure, what we're going to do is we're going to aim a little right and a little high before we make an adjustment. Or two right. But now I have two points that I can work with. Both of them are about even. So now I know where I need to go before we adjust the scope. Yep. But once we do this and we get this thing halfway close, We're going to change. Uh, we're going to change the grain and make it a little lighter. Come off of there. Okay, go up just a click. <clears throat> now this particular scope, and I won't really know until I use it enough. There's a lot of vibration. There's a lot of stuff going on every time you break this thing over and, and reseat it. All right. Move down the target. Here we go. You know, a lot of people go through, you always hear about, you know, three times, groupings of threes and stuff like that. 
Shoot it two or three times before you do anything. See if it's you. See if it's the pellet. See if it's, you know, something that's off. Before you start making adjustments, if you just start adjusting this thing, you, you'll be out here messing around with it all day, which is fine. But I'd rather be hitting something. See if we can get the other line right down from it. Now I'm gonna pick it apart, maybe. But even still, you know, you're talking about lead pellets. <clears throat> <clears throat> Anything that happens to them affects the flight, trajectory, everything. It appears that this one wants to run high. So, when we have the chance and we're still messing with it, drop it down to the 199. <clears throat> and I'm going to go right back over here where we had the bullseye a while ago. Apparently it don't like to shoot left, huh? Back to our big ones. Same target, same bullseye. Pretty close. Think I can do better. Smaller projectile. Same target, same bullseye. Yeah, I'm screwing with you. <laughs> One of the things is, really, I'm just kind of beating the heck out of this thing to see if it goes over. If you notice that that one bullseye target that I keep working on, everything is kind of right there together. Everything else is random. I'm just trying to kind of see what happens with it. I want to know, you know, Your shot is only as good as the optic. Your shot is only as good as the projectile. Your shot is only as good as the air gun. Yes, you do come into play, but the rest of it you do have to know about. Make a round robin. And back to the smaller one. To the larger. And this 25 is doing some, I mean, it, it hits. Probably be able to get the sound off the second camera. Now, Take a little bit of fine tuning. But it's enough to work with. You know, and the whole purpose of this was just to kind of, you know, get you to thinking about what you're going to do the next time. Do I want to use a standard 7.4 grain, an 8, you know, or something with a 22? Start in the middle of the road. That way you can go both directions. I mean, it's just like uh, anything else. If you have a fixed point, you can work from there. Cool. Until next time, I'm going to stroll. It's been back to our point.